Uh, so can you tell me what it is that uh, you're here at the Gun Save Lives or Pro Gun it's, Rally? It's, it's a Second Amendment rally. It's actually a rally for America's Constitution as well, because these are rights, the top ten, of course, when they were ratified, uh, they were called God-given rights, and the government itself was instituted to defend those rights. When you when you read the the, the wording, okay, so uh, the the Second Amendment, what many people uh, disregard, especially progressive liberal Democrats, who are uh, technically enemies of the Constitution. To be very honest with you, um, there's no regulation of the Second Amendment, even though Tim Kaine says, well, it says regulated militia. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Tench Cox in 1788, when explaining the Second Amendment to the populace, said that the sword and every terrible implement of the soldier is the birthright of an American, and that neither the federal or state governments have the authority to disarm the citizen. That's yeah. perfect. And then, so I would say then that the right to defend yourself is a, like as they say in the Constitution, is an inalienable right. Right. It, so it doesn't come from the government. No. It doesn't come from the Constitution or book mm. papers. Anyone writes out there, they can't legislate that away. Exactly. And that the government was established to defend it, not yeah. to change it. How, Phil, how do you feel about government uh, doing a good job at that? Um, they suck. At it. <laughs> See, yeah. I've, I've yeah. been following politics for a while. I'm an old hippie. Um, I remember back in the day as a teenager, you know, power to the people. What greater power than to arm the entire citizenry? Right. The, the ones that are saying now, that are, that are still chanting that, are saying, give up your guns. You yeah, that, that worked out real good for the Native Americans too, right? Right. You know what happens after you give up your guns? Then you got to give up your, uh, your kitchen knives like mm, the Brits yeah, do, like, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, it's, it's a shame what's going on over there. I, I mean, what's, what's next? Uh, cricket bats? Cricket bats. Oh, bloody lovely. i got to give them a cricket bat Get now. Rid of, uh, screwdrivers, any kind of uh, tools that you have <laughs> in your house to kind of fix uh, cartoon cars. Mm. Yeah. Oh, shameful. That's, that's what happens. Little encroachments of stuff. Exactly. Right. It's, 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 uh, it's death by a thousand cuts. It's losing your rights little by little. And before you realize it, the only people that have guns are the bad guys. Now, there's a lot of people on Facebook and the media talking about, well, what are you people in the Second Amendment groups, all you citizen soldiers, phonies, whatever they want to call us. Well, when, when, when you're faced with the American military, if you rise up, is their thing. I'm like, well, excuse me, our American soldiers, sailors, marine, airmen, are not automatons. They will not obey an order because they're military and they're brainwashed to obey a, a superior order. If you have a conscious decision, they do exactly say, they refuse and orders. refuse those orders to fire on citizens if they've broken no laws and they're doing something constitutionally. Remember, every soldier, sailor, marine, airman, police officer, even the bozos in Washington, when they put their hand on the Bible and raise their right hand, they say to, they, they've sworn to uphold what? The government? No. The Constitution against both enemies, both foreign and domestic. You, so you swear an allegiance to the Constitution, not to the government or the ruling parties. Well, that's where you say that maybe the Constitution is not doing a good job. It's not enough then, you could say, and curtailing those things. Because you have situations like after Katrina, I think the, the Guard came out there, the military, confiscating weapons. Door -door. Right. They were wrong for doing that. And there were those, I have a son who was deployed down there, 29th Infantry Division out of Charlottesville. Forgive me, running out of air. Uh, he, he knew that was going on. He refused to do it. Really? Good. Good for him. He refused to do it. He says no. And his squad, they were talking about him, and he was like going, and he's a cop. He's like, no, we are not taking anybody's weapons, because not only do you have to deal with looters, you got to deal with water moccasins, gators, snakes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. You know, toot them, toot them. You know? Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, no, they, 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 there are those that would not do it, refuse to do it. But... When these liberals talk about giving the order to the military to do something, they don't realize that if things go sideways because they're, we're being literally being nudged on purpose into that corner, uh, and they're going to see how far they can push us. If it goes sideways, yeah, things are going to get a little silly in this country, but they're going to find out that the vast majority of the foot soldiers, the airmen, the uh, pilots, 
people in the Navy who command boats. Um, they're not going to be uh, uh, backing the government order. They're going to be backing the people, the, uh, the law-abiding citizens of the country. And it won't be very pretty. And you forget that a lot of the people, even who are not in the military, are veterans. Right. right? So it's going to be... Look at, look at uh, how... When was, when was the last time an NRA member was involved in a mass shooting? Uh, they killed a mass shooter. <laughs> yes. Texas. Yes. Texas. Yes. The mass, sh the mass shooter down in Texas was killed by an NRA yes. member. And you got to listen to this man's testimony. He's a born-again Christian, and he was powerful. I heard it the other night, and he was taking fire. It wasn't like the guy was running away and he was shooting. He confronted the guy, and they were exchanging rounds. He went toe to toe with this man. And he wounded him, and it was his acts that saved how many more lives. Right. And how did this guy get a gun? The government screwed up. He was Air Force. He should. He was supposed to be dishonorably discharged. He had uh, uh, charges against him for domestic violence, uh, and convicted for it. It seems to be like uh, government screws up in a lot of different areas in terms of accountability. And, uh, and then they try and fix the problem by more government regulation, and they're the ones that caused the problem right, in the first place. Right. The Parkland shooting, right? Uh -huh. So you find that the murderer was reported to the FBI twice. Right. Right. The school had known that he had interest in shooting the up. School, he made a the YouTube before, video. The year before, the school asked him to be committed somehow. Right. Okay, somebody within the school, whether it was a guidance counselor or something, 39 times they went to this kid's house? The police, the Broward right. County Sheriff, and then the Broward County Sheriff's Department was told to stand down. What? Ever since, ever since Columbine, the standing order for shooting in a school is to confront the shooter. That's the standing order across the country. And, and nobody is attacking that. And then you've got uh, young Mr. Hogue, it's pronounced Hogue, not Hogg, uh, uh, cussing up a storm, and he's, he's the most ignorant little kid uh, who's throwing a temper tantrum out there, and uh, uh, Mr. Hogue, face to face, let's do it, let's talk. You weren't a survivor, you were in the building. Survivors dodge the bullets. Let's talk about the young guys from the ROTC that got 60 people and teachers behind Kevlar sheets to protect them. They had the presence of mind to act in the face of danger. Let's talk about the young ROTC cadet that held the door open to have his schoolmates escape and he was shot dead. There's a hero for you. Why aren't we talking about him? Who's right. representing him? I have son, I, my youngest son was ROTC at James River High School. So when I heard this young man did what he did, man, I'm telling you, I'm choking tears back now because I know my son. And I know that this man, this young man, buried with full military honors, courtesy of the, uh, 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 was it, um, the uh, academy in, uh, in New York City, uh, New York State. Uh, Boy, I'm getting old. You're good, man. <laughs> I would, I would, what I'm saying? I would, I would say, though, it's weird, though, that the media and the liberals, instead of seeing that it was government failure that caused this stuff, they say they want to punish everyone else. Right. All the the law-abiding. Right, people, people who don't go out there and mass degree and murder everyone. Like, 99.99% of all gun owners don't engage in that kind of behavior. Uh, so, it's funny, though, then, that they'll use this as an example to punish uh, everyone else. Yeah. Right? You see... They'll never, I never hear them talk about trying to disarm the criminal. No, no. Instead of blaming the individual, you blame uh, society and everyone else as a whole. And it's a more way to kind of continue to curtail uh, your natural rights to mm -hmm. self-ownership, your natural exactly. rights to, uh, to protect yourself from yeah. the aggression. And, and look at, I heard you talking about taxation before. When did the progressive income tax come into being? Under Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was a progressive. Who's part, and he tried to get, of course, the, the League of Nations was the first attempt at the one world government that, now being a journalist, go to YouTube and type in Walter Cronkite backslash New World Order backslash Right Hand of Satan. There's a 17 minute video where he's receiving the Norman Cousins Lifetime Achievement Award for Global Governance. He graduated in 1947 with a poli sci and journalism, minor in journalism, and he felt he could do more for the movement as a journalist. So think about that. And here he is talking about how the American people and the, the sovereign nations of the world should surrender some of their freedoms in the name of world peace. Oh, yeah. Okay? This is Walter Cronkite, the most trusted man in America. Watch this video, and in this video, he called uh, 
Pat Robertson, the head of the opposite, the president of the opposition, because he said, if I may uh, do my impersonation of uh, Sir Walter Cronkite. Pat Robertson, the president of the opposition, said that anyone who tries to bring about a one world government without the returned Lord Jesus Christ as its head is doing the work of the devil. Well, my friends, join me as I sit at the right hand of Satan. Wow. <laughs> it's in the video. Okay, so he's a globalist. I mean, a one world, right. no borders. So that's, he's against the Constitution like right a, there. The end goal of communism, right? Right, Today basically global communism. Yeah. Guess who came on at the end via video link up to congratulate him on his global, achieve, you know, world, global governance achievement award? Who's that? Hillary Rodham Clinton. <laughs> of course, yes. You can't make this stuff up. It's still on the internet. Get it, look at it, educate the people. These people don't want America. They want that one world government. By the way, it was prophesied in the book of Revelation. Eventually it will happen, and it won't be good when it does. Right. One last question. Uh, some people will say that the uh, argument for uh, defense, self-defense, to, uh, right, uh, to have arms, is against... Uh, government tyranny, the invent that government does become right. tyrannical to some people. That's when, right. when, do you, when would you define uh, such a moment in which you would have to then seek the abolishment of government when it becomes tyrannical? What is There's not so much the that? abolishment, but the reestablishment of the government to those original standards. That's also in there, too. But it's it, not just the abolishment of government, but it is to abolish what was and reestablish it according to the principles that started it. But if the principles that started it Right, it was supposed to be this American experiment to see mm -hmm. you can limit the size and scope of government from becoming such a leviathan, and today it has become such a leviathan. Maybe perhaps then those principles, those starting points don't work. No, the starting points worked. It's after progressivism reared its ugly head in the early 20th century in America where the rights started to be getting eroding. And the, at one point we had a 90% tax bracket under the progressive income tax, 90%. I think the uh, the government before the Constitution for those couple of years uh, with the Federalist Papers uh, was the best kind of mode uh, that we had in which right. the federal but government they, didn't work. They, I think they should go back to that. But the thing is, they also explained that with those rights, now we didn't have to worry about funding anything for roads when the taxes came in. That's when things went really started going sideways. Taxes but, came in, yeah. <clears throat> you know, with and that's through the progressives. That wasn't uh, anything that was brought in by. Uh, uh, the old heads of the day, as it were. I mean, it was, and this was all about uh, European teaching that was brought to America. I mean, uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, was, the woman who started Planned Parenthood, uh, Sanger, she was a racist. Her whole idea behind Planned Parenthood was to get rid of black people. I think I remember hearing something about okay. that. Okay, yeah. yeah, go look it up. She said they're like weeds, they need to be exterminated. Uh, you can't make this stuff up, and it's there. And uh, government just signed uh, more funding for it. Yep, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, so you can't really say then that in the terms of uh, people claim that government protects life and liberty, it doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> no, it's getting worse and worse. Right. Did you think then that the protection of life, liberty, property should come at the individual level, at the community level, and stop looking at government as right, a salvation? Right, exactly. That? And, that, and the thing is, that's the whole thing behind progressives. If it's, oh, the government's got to help you do this, the government's got to help you do that. Oh. Bunk. Right. Because you look at the worst slums in America, they're owned lock, stock, and barrel by progressive liberal Democrats. That's right, true. Okay? Uh, am I missing something? I'm from Harlem, New York City, originally. That's where I was born. Okay? My father was raised in Harlem, New York City. Okay? It has been a Democrat stronghold, by and large, for 60 years. The fact that they had Rudy Giuliani, by, by the grace of God, put that city back where it belonged to a major degree, but ha under, under uh, uh, de Blasio, oh my goodness. Like I said, I have family in law enforcement from, from here all the way up to Long Island. And let me tell you something, the cops in, in, in New York City, they are not fans of de Blasio, to put it very politely. I mean, look at uh, Detroit, yep. liberal power paradise. Uh -huh. But you don't hear about Eminem talking shit about, uh, talking about negatively about all the politicians there. The, the liberals no, 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 no. Ruined this town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, Detroit. Detroit is in worse shape today than it was in 1955. Nagasaki was hit by an atomic bomb and looks magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. Am I missing? Seems to be uh, more government is never the solution. Never. Never. Solution. never.
Teaching should be on a local level. Yes. You got the National Education Association back in the 1980s said, from Washington, if we can get them, them being the children across the country, if we can get them at age four, by the time they're 18, they will believe nobody but us. Right, what right. were they doing? They're trying to indoctrinate. Look at what we have coming out of high schools, middle schools, colleges. They talk about global warming. Reading levels has gone down tremendously mm -hmm. in the past several decades. Do yeah. you, you believe in global warming? Just to ask. Yes or no? Just what do you uh, it's think about it? the weather. Okay. The reason, this, the main reason I don't believe in global warming is I'm an old hippie. And they told me back then, the EPA and the nature Nazis, I, I coined the term, nature Nazis. They said that man-made pollution was going to freeze us to death by the year 1999. 75% of the oceans would be dead because yeah. the krill, et cetera, et cetera. And somewhere around 1985, it went from global cooling to global warming using the same evidence. How in the hell can that be scientifically possible? Because if the math was right, in 1980, Mount, Mount, Mount St. Helens went ballistic and dumped 300 years of man-made pollution at a 1980 level. If the math was right for global cooling, that should have plunged us into a global winter. There's also the uh, ozone hole over uh, Argentina. Yeah, that was supposed to, and that's gone. Yeah, that's gone. Okay, now here's the, here's, the, here's the fun part, okay? If their math was right. But the thing is, somewhere around 1985, it went from global cooling to global warming with the same evidence. All right. Um, the last time I checked, once something is established as a scientific fact, you can't prove, forgive the pun, the polar opposite with the same evidence. That's not called science, it's called alchemy. So if you got some lead, we can turn it into gold right about yeah. now and really make a fortune. Yeah. Anybody up? I'm I good. I think it's mostly an, uh, an attack to control businesses and uh, exactly. Our, uh, carbon tax. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm being, 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 being yeah. 60 years old and also working on cars in my youth, and the catalytic converter was created to turn earth cooling carbon monoxide into earth friendly carbon dioxide. The You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> No, I, I, I see a lot of uh, the influence in, uh, in trying to demonize the market, but mm -hmm. I think it's also just a lot of uh, schemes to kind of squeeze more money, not just for the market, but, but from everyone else. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's like uh, they're doing now to squeeze uh, more natural rights from everyone of course. else, right? And the history doesn't show to have a good pattern of what happens to people when their rights get stripped, when they are... Uh, de-armed, you know, places like Mao China, right? Yeah. So, you know, these things don't particularly fare well for yeah. a lot of people. Well, but uh, thank you so much for coming out, supporting uh, Pro Gun.